that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. If Rome is a mother of denomination and she is the beast, and the mark of the beast, and they made an image unto it, counseled the churches all together, make an image to the beast. So right straight back to the mark of the beast again. The system of the world, denominationalism, has brought up a system to bring the mark of the beast. And you see it as well as I see it, that right now it's going to be forced that all that's not in that, already set in order, the big machine sitting there, the mechanics is there waiting for Satan to get into it with the dynamics. O Pius XI stated in 1928 that the only means by which the world Christian community was to return to faith was to return to the Roman Catholic. In this regard, the papacy rejected, to a great extent, the idea of the participation of the Catholic Church within the World Council of Churches. Pius XI stated that the one true church was that of the Roman Catholic denomination, and therefore there was the implication that the Catholic Church was not permitted at this stage to engage with other denominations, which the papacy considered to be irrelevant. After the outbreak of World War II, on August 23, 1948, delegates of 147 churches assembled in Amsterdam to merge their religious faith. A worldwide Christian inter-church organization called the World Council of Churches, or WCC, was founded in 1948 to work for the cause of ecumenism. The WCC arose out of the ecumenical movement and has as its basis the following statement. The World Council of Churches is a fellowship of churches which confess the Lord Jesus Christ as God and Savior according to the Scriptures, and therefore seek to fulfill together their common calling to the glory of the one God. It is a community of churches on the way to visible unity in one faith and one Eucharistic fellowship, expressed in worship and in common life in Christ. It seeks to advance towards this unity. Pope John XXIII took a different stance in 1958, when he was elected as the head of the Catholic Church. Ecumenism was a new element of Catholic ideology which had been permitted, which was signified to a great extent, when John XXIII met with the then Archbishop of Canterbury, Geoffrey Fisher. This was the first meeting between an Archbishop of Canterbury and the Pope in the Vatican for 600 years. John XXIII later developed the office of the Secretariat for Promoting Christian Unity, which symbolized a dramatic shift in support for the ecumenical movement from the Catholic Church, led from the Vatican. 1961 saw Catholic members attend the Delhi Conference of the WCC, which marked a significant shift in attitude toward the WCC from the papacy. There was the idea, in addition to this, that the Pope invited non-Catholics to attend the Second Vatican Council. This new approach to interdenominational relations was marked within the Unitatis Rite Integratio. The World Council of Churches has been described as taking an adversarial position toward the State of Israel. 
It has also been claimed the Council has focused particularly on activities and publications criticizing Israel in comparison with other human rights issues. In 2009, the Council called for an international boycott on goods produced in Israeli settlements, which it described as illegal, unjust, and incompatible with peace. According to Brother Branham, there will be a worldwide religious boycott, inviting all people to join the Federation of Churches, where all the non-denominational churches will be closed and shut out. It will be within one to six months. This is the beginning of sorrow when the time begins to close. It will stop everything, except those who belong to that union of churches. As soon as the squeezing time begins to occur, the unwise virgins will begin to cry out for oil, when the sons of God are manifested. When the church is gone and Satan is incarnated to the beast, there will be a horrible boycott for three and a half years. There will be a persecution coming upon all those who would unite with it, and nobody can go to any churches unless they have a mark from their own church, they cannot buy or sell. Even those borderline foolish virgins, who received the mark of the beast, will not escape dreadfully excruciating torment while still alive, while others may even slowly die a horrible gruesome death at the start of World War III, after the three and a half years. Even the wrath of God is much more worse, during and after World War III. Our future depends on our decision today. Being one among the foolish virgins is not a place to be. Let us wake up from our slumber. Time is sooner than we expect. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. When John saw the beast that rose up out of the sea in Revelation 13 verse 1, he saw only one name of blasphemy upon the heads. We understand through the message that the blasphemous name is a name of a church that calls herself a church of God, but it's a lodge, an organization, a whore that can live any kind of life that she wants. But when John was carried away in the wilderness in Revelation 17 verse 3, he saw the scarlet-colored beast having full of names of blasphemy. Not just one name, but many names of blasphemy. These are names of many church organizations. These are her daughters, not as bad as their mother, but they were harlots. They are falsely called church. They are lodges. We understand that a lodge is a temporary shelter, a temporary homestay accommodation, when living far away from a permanent home. The message is clearly telling us that there is only one church. The seventh angel is directing us back to our true home, the original faith. We can't join this church. We have to be born in it to become sons and daughters of God. The children of God don't belong to any churches. Now they're hollering about me kicking against the organization. It's those blasphemous names that call themselves churches of God oh, and churches of Christ and churches of Methodists and churches of... It's lodges! Amen. Not churches! One church! That's the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what is it? The mystical body of Jesus Christ in operation on earth. Made up of a member of any of these congregations that would be a member of Christ's body. You have to be born into it, not join into it. And to, to join in it is blasphemous names. Just what is it in me? Sometimes I just don't know what keeps me in your love. Why you never let me go And though you're in me now I fall and hurt you still My Lord, please show me how To know just how you feel Cause you have forgiven me Too many times it seems I feel I'm not what you might call Finds its way to me. Teach me to trust in you with all of my heart. To lean not on my own understanding, 
Cause I just forget You won't give me what I can't bear Take me out of the dark, my Lord I don't want to be there No In 325 AD, Emperor Constantine invited every bishop in the church to gather in Nicaea and formally establish Christian doctrine. The goal was to unite the increasingly divided church with a set of beliefs its leaders agreed on and would hold each other accountable to. This meeting, known as the First Council of Nicaea, was specifically called to make a decision about Arianism, the belief that God created Jesus and that Jesus was not eternal or one with God. For the first time, leaders from every quarter of the church would formally declare who Jesus was in relation to God. Arianism was growing in popularity, even among church leaders, and those who opposed it believed salvation was at stake. If Christians were wrong about who Christ was, did they really even believe in him? Emperor Licinius, who was emperor until 324 AD, thought the dispute was meaningless. But by 325 AD, these two competing ideas of who Jesus was were threatening to tear the church in two. Constantine wasn't necessarily interested in the theological outcome, so long as it put an end to the division. So he called together the church's first ecumenical council, a gathering of leaders from the global church. The construction of what is now known as Old St. Peter's Basilica began in 330 AD and lasted for about 40 years. The nave was 340 feet long and had two aisles on either side. It could accommodate 3,000 to 4,000 worshippers. The outer facade of Old St. Peter's is asymmetrical by design. There was also a large colonnaded atrium between the outer and inner facades. Someone would face the inner facade after entering through the outer facade. The altar of Old St. Peter's used Solomonic columns that according to tradition, Constantine had brought from the Temple of Solomon itself. The interior of the church was lavishly decorated with mosaics and frescoes, most notably by Giotto. Some of these can still be observed at other churches and museums. Constantine's Old St. Peter's Basilica remained in use from the 4th century until the 16th century. The fight of Trinitarianism against Arianism didn't stop after the Nicaea Council. Three tribes of Rome were plucked up, the Herali in 493 AD, the Vandals in 533 AD, and the Ostrogoths in 553 AD. Emperor Justinian, working through General Belisarius, was the power that murdered the three tribes and the reason for their overthrow was their adherence to Arianism and opposition to Trinitarianism of the Orthodox Catholic faith. And further to this, the contest between Arianism and Trinitarianism was the means of enthroning the papacy. The Orthodox Catholics have consistently persecuted those who do not hold the Trinitarian doctrine and were regarded as heretics. The King of the Franks, Pippin the Short, promised to donate the Papal State territories to the Pope, and the document was recorded in 756 AD as the donation of Pippin and provided the legal foundation for the Papal States. This is supplemented by the Treaty of Pavia. St. Peter's Basilica in Vatican City begun by Pope Julius II in 1506 and completed in 1615 under Pope Paul V. It is designed as a three-aisled Latin cross with a dome at the crossing, directly above the high altar, which covers the shrine of St. Peter the Apostle. St. Peter's Basilica is one of the most renowned works of Renaissance architecture and features many notable Baroque elements. It is often regarded as the greatest building of its age. Starting from the 16th century, several churches are rising to recognize the whoredom of the Catholic Church, but instead of going back to the Word, they came back as harlots. When Luther came out from the Catholic organization, the little group of people went over and formed another organization. Then the Holy Spirit went out upon John Wesley, he never organized anything, but after he left, the people after him has formed another organization. Then the Holy Ghost came in with the Pentecostals. They went out from the Methodist, and guess what? They have also organized. And when the Holy Ghost sent William Branham to Laodicea, he has directed the true vines of Laodicea to go back to the original faith. He organized church orders, but he made it very easy for the elect to differentiate these church systems from the true church. Today, most of us have deliberately disobeyed the true message. We are not supposed to join church systems. As a consequence, we have been invaded by dignitarians and Nicolaitans who are so stiff-necked to go back to the original teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. They prefer disrespecting the word of God, as long as people will respect their customs. It is the most very deceiving age because they are sanctified, filled with brotherly kindness, anointed with genuine Holy Spirit, and even proven to be workers of faith, but they are still anti-word. They prefer organizing church systems instead of trusting the leadership of the Holy Ghost. 
Aside from Dignitarianism and Nicolaitanism, they took advantage of their sleeping unaware church members by formulating various anti-word doctrines, skillfully designed to attract more members, but with a clear intention of glorifying men, instead of glorifying God, such as Branhamism, seven thundering men, eight angels, ninth angels, fivefold perfectors, two souls, pre-existence of souls, third testament, false parousia, contenders, polygamy and so forth and so on. The Age of Revolution is a period from the late 18th to the mid-19th centuries, during which a number of significant revolutionary movements occurred in most of Europe and the Americas. The period is noted for the change from absolutist monarchies to representative governments with a written constitution, and the creation of nation-states. Influenced by the new ideas of the Enlightenment, the American Revolution, from 1765 to 1783, is usually considered the starting point of the Age of Revolution. During this period, Napoleon has struck fear on the papacy by incarcerating the Pope from 1796 to 1814. This has marked the end of 1,260 years of papal power, when Rome was persecuting the martyrs. Pope lost his power. By 1861, much of the papal state's territory had been conquered by the Kingdom of Italy. Only Lazio, including Rome, remained under the Pope's temporal control. The opportunity for the Kingdom of Italy to eliminate the papal states came in 1870. King Victor Emmanuel II, at first, aimed at a peaceful conquest of the city, and proposed sending troops into Rome, under the guise of offering protection to the Pope. When the Pope refused, Italy declared war on September 10, 1870. The Italian army, commanded by General Raphael Cadorna, crossed the frontier of the Papal territory on September 11, and advanced slowly toward Rome. The Italian army reached the Aurelian Walls on September 19, and placed Rome under a state of siege. Although the Pope's tiny army was incapable of defending the city, Pius IX ordered it to put up more than a token resistance to emphasize that Italy was acquiring Rome by force and not consent. Pope Pius IX ordered the commander of the papal forces to limit the defense of the city in order to avoid bloodshed. The city was captured on September 20, 1870. Rome and what was left of the papal states was annexed to the Kingdom of Italy as a result of a plebiscite the following October. This marked the definite end of the papal states. Pope lost Rome. Between 1861 and 1929 the status of the Pope was referred to as the Roman question. Italy made no attempt to interfere with the Holy See within the Vatican walls. However, it confiscated church property in many places. In 1871, the Quirinal Palace was confiscated by the King of Italy and became the Royal Palace. Thereafter, the Popes resided undisturbed within the Vatican walls. The Popes did not recognize the Italian king's right to rule in Rome, and they refused to leave the Vatican compound until the dispute was resolved in 1929, when the Lateran Treaty between the Holy See and the Kingdom of Italy was signed by Prime Minister and Head of Government Benito Mussolini, on behalf of King Victor Emmanuel III, and by Cardinal Secretary of State Pietro Gasperi, for Pope Pius XI. The treaty, which became effective on June 7, 1929, established the independent state of Vatican City and reaffirmed the special status of Catholic Christianity in Italy. Today, what is it in this church? A betrayal. They're getting documents. They're going to try to have a... Well, now, you just keep this on your mind. They're going to have a confederation of churches. The churches of Christ of America has already confederated with all the churches and they're going to have a band here someday that'll shut out to fight communism which will hook up with Catholicism with the Protestant church and the Catholic church together and the inner denominations who stand out for the truth and get away from that dogma that they've got will be persecuted. The mark of the beast, the seal of God, the showdown will soon come. And brother, if that's not in there, you'll be deceived as sure as the world. Cause it'll look so nice, you'll say, now it's communism made a, uh, a made a, uh, for the world. Well, let us make a, 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 another agreement and bring all the Christian, Christianize the world back. And it looks so good the people will jump into it. See? They'll confederate the churches and bring, try to make Christianity one unit. And the Bible says in Revelation that he give his power and everything that he made an image unto the beast and exercised all the power the beast did before him. Sure it is. Wish we had time to hook revelations in this thing, but we haven't. See, to see where it's at, you're right here in the end of time, brother. We're at the end of the age.
and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And remember, she was called Mystery Babylon. We know that's the Catholic Church, but notice, she's a mother of harlots. What's a harlot? The same thing as she is, the whore. Now, where did these organizations come from? There's her mother. That's what they are to begin with. Then you say, that's the Antichrist. That's true. Then if that's Antichrist, then what about our organizations? Just as harlot and whore is the same thing. Committing adultery. Committing fornication accepting false things because of the mind and intellectuals of man. As the Bible said, teaching for doctrine the commandments of man. That's what's called church today, which is against God's kingdom. In the beginning at Pentecost, it was not a local church with a church name on it. Even Peter, who was instructed by our Lord Jesus himself to feed the saints, did not testify that he was the pastor of that church, as opposed to what Catholics claim that he was the first pope. The saints gathered in the upper room waiting for the promise. The earliest document in which Catholic Church was used is a letter from Ignatius of Antioch. He was a disciple of John. In one of his letters to Christians in Smyrna, he wrote, Where there is Christ Jesus, there is the Catholic Church. This is the earliest known written record of the term Catholic Church, written around 107 AD. Dignitarians have later used that name to establish a universal church organization, and was formally started through a Nicaea Creed in 325 AD. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Because you realize that the woman was what Satan used in the beginning. God chose the man, Satan chose the woman. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Here's the one that has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. How many hills, how many cities in the world the, at a church sits on seven hills? Only one. Where is that? The Vatican City in Rome. Is that right? Amen. The Bible said that this horrible horror that made all the world commit fornications and brought out a bunch of little daughters to teach about the same thing she did. It wasn't as bad as her, but they were harlots. Taught them the same thing. So the beginning of it will be a woman or a church sitting on seven hills in Rome. Amen. I'd look all over the world and tell me where's that? A church sitting on seven hills. beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, 
except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. In the middle of this seven-eighth week, it'll break its covenant with Rome, or Rome will break it with Israel, and that will cause the abomination again to scatter. Received no power as yet. They're not kings. They didn't have the ten, the horns. Didn't have crowns. They received power like kings. What is it? Dictators. Yeah. Not crown kings. Dictators. Oh my. Mm-hmm. 